Studio One 5.1 has some great new features in it, and tonight what I want to cover is the one that's a channel filter or track filter, and this can be used to filter down which tracks you see and which channels you see, of course. I want to show an interesting twist on this, so stay tuned. All right, with Studio One 5.1, one of the new features that we got is the ability to do a search for uh, particular channels or particular tracks. Now, in my case, I happen to have my channels and my tracks mimicking each other. So whichever is in one is in the other one. So I just set this up for channels. Of course, you can do it for tracks, you can do it for channels, you can do it for both. However you have yours set up is going to determine how that works best for you. So in this case, um, I've got it set up for channels. But you can see here on my screen that I've got all of my channels showing currently. Now this kind of flows back to my um, video that I did at an earlier date on making sure that you always have a workflow, that your, uh, that your sessions are set up the way that you want them to be so that everything is quick and at hand. So I had to make a couple of modifications to my setting, uh, to my sessions, so that my base template session was set up this way so this new search filter worked. So why did I do this? So what I was using before were console scenes for two reasons. One, um, when I would go into those scenes, which you can see here in uh, the lower left there, you can see here are my scenes. And I used to have it set this way. So I'd go to drums and I would just see the drum channels and guitars and vocals, right? Or back to all tracks. And I could limit my different views that I was seeing on the screen, both for the channels up top and the, or I'm sorry, the tracks up top and the channels down at the bottom. So if I was working on one particular part of the mix, I could do that. Now, works great. No problems with that until you add a new track. So if I were to, you know, take this, set of uh, backup vocals, for example, here. And I were to add three or four or five more layers to that. Well, when I went to this vocals view, I wouldn't see those new tracks unless I went into the vocals view and selected some more tracks to add to it and save that view, which is not that difficult, but it is something that you just had to actually uh, consciously remember to do all the time. A little bit of a pain, not that big a deal. And actually when this new 5.1 feature came around and it, it was search, I was thinking, well, uh, who cares? That's not that big a deal. I already have that with my views. Here's where it's different is these views are more dynamic in that you can do a search based on criteria that you know are going to exist. So what I did was I went back through my uh, template and I created all of my tracks and channels. You can see here my tracks, my folders, my buses all have this little preface of one letter and a colon before them. So V for vocals, D for drums, G for guitar, and uh, K for keyboards. And so now what I can do is I can set these searches up based on that. So I won't be using these scenes anymore. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. But instead, when you see this channel list here, you can see at the bottom, I have the option to search for stuff. So if I say I want to search for V colon, I'm going to get all of my vocals. If I want to search for D colon instead, you can see I'm automatically going to get all of my drums. So this is awesome because not only do I get the channels that I already had set up that way. But if I add some new ones, so let's say, for example, I take this, this vocal here, and I am going to duplicate that track, and I'm going to duplicate it again, I'm going to duplicate it again. And it won't matter how many times I do this, because you can see that it's automatically leaving that V colon in the front of it. 
And so now when I go to V colon here, it limits to a dynamic set of those tracks instead of me having to remember to do it. So all I have to do is duplicate the track and I'm already done. Now to take this one step further, these I have applied to being macros. So if you take a look at my macros, uh, so we'll go up here to the top and we go to the macro view. I'm going to go into my macro organizer here. And so here you can see I've set up a group called filters and you can see I have, you know, all of my different states. So let's say vocals, for example, if I edit that particular macro, you can see that what I have is a edit filter channels. And if you double click on that, you can see that the parameter I've got there is V colon. Then I have taken that and gone into my keyboard shortcuts. And in my keyboard shortcuts, you can see that I've got all these filtered channels. So filter to vocals is control numpad four, which happens also on my gaming keyboard to be one of my macro keys that runs down the uh, down the left side of the keyboard where I can just hit one key over there and I've got them organized by the top one is all, the next one is drums, next one's guitar, next one's vocals, next one's keys. So those all work like that. Now to take this one step further than that, I also have a fader port eight in front of me. And if you're not aware of the fader port uh, eight, 16 modes, there is a shift all button that you can press on there. That shift all button will tell the fader port to mimic the selection of channels that's on screen. So as I select these different views that are on my screen, I actually am selecting the views that are on my fader port as well. So I have easy access to group things rather than having to just bank around or just channel around onto the fader port. I can actually show just the channels that I want to be mixing. So when I hit drums, my fader port automatically goes to the kick, the snare, the toms, the hi-hat, the ride, the overhead, the room mics, and the drum bus. All eight channels, my whole drum mix is there. When I go to, um, you know, say for example, guitars, I've got seven channels of guitars, which you can see as, you know, my, my bass, two acoustics, two rhythm, one lead. Of course, I can increase that. All I have to do is replicate one of those channels or just create a new channel and name it with a G colon in front of it. Minor change in my behavior results in a major change in my workflow. So I hope that this video has been useful for you to increase your ability to utilize Studio One, to make your workflow more efficient, and to make you enjoy using your DAW more, like I'm going to enjoy using mine more. Studio One 5.1, just one feature of the new release. If you find this video useful, please share it, like it, subscribe to the channel, your subscriptions are super important to me. I'm excited every time I see an email that says that someone new has subscribed. So really seriously, click on that subscribe button below. And thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Have a great day.